Okay, so I have spent uh, many hours since uh, yesterday watching both the Arizona and the Michigan hearings. The Arizona hearing was another quasi-hearing, kind of like Pennsylvania, where you had state senators presiding over it, um, but it wasn't, you know, an official state senate uh, hearing. Um, it was, you know, not in the Senate chambers. Uh, but this one in Michigan, however, uh, was, it was, you know, it, in front of a, uh, you know, a formal committee in the state Senate. Um, and um, both of them, both the Arizona one and the Michigan one, uh, and it's hard for me to say about the Pennsylvania one, I talked about that before, but um, I didn't watch that one all the way through. But, you know, the highlights that I, that I saw and what I watched live of the Pennsylvania one, um, I thought it was good, but n not really comparable to, um, you know, the Arizona or the Michigan ones. And I'm not going to go down and detail, you know, every witness um, because there were so many good ones. I mean, it was, it was, it was hit or miss uh, to some extent. Um, there were a couple that I thought really bombed and didn't really have much to add or say. Uh, there was one woman today, the Dominion whistleblower at Michigan, who I thought, you know, might have had some some interesting things to say, but I you know, I didn't think that uh, she was very tactful. Her optics were not really up to up to par, as far as I'm concerned. I thought there were a lot of very high quality witnesses um, who who did show up in Michigan today, um, and I haven't finished all of it, but I've watched hours and hours of it today. I can tell you it was a um, it was good. There was a lot of um, mostly. Um, poll challengers, I believe their title is, uh, people who were essentially the observers in Detroit talking about how they were harassed, how they were impeded, um, how no matter how much they protested a ballot, um, you know, the, <laughs> the poll workers would do nothing about it. There was a woman who was trained as a poll worker who said that, you know, they were instructed that way, that, you know, the poll challengers, you don't listen to them, you tell them to go away. If they don't go away, you call the police. Uh, there were all these poll challengers talking about how they were removed by the police. And this, to me, was really the most effective um, and compelling uh, testimony out of both hearings. Um, it, you know, it's it, it's one thing to go through, you know, all the Dominion stuff, which I've kind of been critical of because I I think that you focus on the low hanging fruit, which is uh, the observers, um, which is the cover up um, of what was going on in these various um, tabulation centers. The Dominion stuff, as I've said, is a little more esoteric and hard to prove. Both of these hearings in Arizona and Michigan start off with the Dominion stuff and again well even though I'm somewhat critical of them uh, from you know as far as a, you know maybe a legal strategy goes um, because judges tend to be old people who are not really that well versed in computers and I think that you know their eyes might glaze over as far as the PR goes um, I thought that these were both you know that the attacks on Dominion um, were successful in these two hearings I found them to be um, somewhat compelling um, you know, not nearly as much as the um, as the testimony of, about the observers. Um, you know, of course, in Arizona, there was one woman in particular uh, who was completely denied uh, say, to watch the signature verification. She was escorted out of the room, said you can't watch the signature match, um, and she estimated that there were about 34,000 ballots uh, that she alone was denied from verifying the signatures on. Uh, that enough <laughs> throws the election in Arizona. That puts it into question. Um, uh, that election, you know, just on its face, uh, should be uh, thrown out. The proper resolution to that would be a revote. Um, and similar, uh, similarly, you have what was going on in Michigan, in Detroit, where uh, the the challengers and the observers uh, were stonewalled at every extent. They were harassed. Um, they were castigated uh, by the, um, you know, almost entirely democratic. Uh, contingency of poll workers and the one take big takeaway that I got from the, watching these two hearings is that um, I, I hope as many ordinary Americans as possible watch them and are exposed to them um, and I think that you know with the publicity of everything that's been going on uh, this sort of stuff you know it's not going to be silenced this is not going to just go away people are not going to forget about this and I think what this is doing is it's red pilling uh, a lot and a lot of normies uh, on the democracy question you know it's easy for me to just sort of um dismiss the significance of uh elections being stolen uh, because 
I'm someone, you know, I'm a fan. I, I own uh, Democracy of the God, the Fail, the book. Uh, you know, so I'm kind of already in this sphere of uh, I don't take democracy that seriously. I don't think that it legitimizes things. I don't think that a 49 percent uh, or that 51 percent uh, of the people vote that 49 percent of the population should be enslaved, that that suddenly makes slavery um, uh, moral or justified. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm not someone who puts a lot of faith in voting. But these other folks, they take, you know, they've bought into the civic religion of the United States that, you know, uh, voting is your civic duty, all this stuff, um, and that, you know, our votes are sacred. Um, these are, you know, these are very deliberate um, uh, terms. Uh, this, you know, these have religious invocations or religious implications, or you could say that they're invoking the language of religion uh, to um, dress up democracy in America. But after uh, this election, specifically these two hearings, everything they've been hearing, um, I don't know how ordinary people can continue to have any faith in the democratic system. And that's a good thing because, um, it, you know, if we get to the point to where uh, election, let's say somebody's elected who decides to make AR-15s an NFA item, uh, that everyone has to pay their $200 tax stamp and register their guns. Um, it, if under a system where people take democracy 100% seriously, they'll say, well, I guess, you know, 51% of the population voted this way. Uh, and I, even though I'm in the 49%, I have to go along with it because that's just the way democracy works. You know, we had our fair election and I lost. Um, I guess I'll just have to go along with the law. Um, that's not going to be the case now, definitely. Because uh, even if this is someone who would have felt that way, um, who would have thought that, you know, oh, the vote is absolute. I lost, so I had to go along with whatever the, the enemy says. Uh, if they don't think that that election was fair, if they see all these things that, I mean, are very clear signs that, that the election was stolen. I mean, you don't try and cover up something uh, that's not going on. Uh, you have no reason to try and uh, hide uh, what you're doing unless you're doing something nefarious. Uh, that's, you know, you don't train your poll workers uh, that uh, to stonewall uh, the poll challengers. <laughs> you don't train them to try and, you know, hunch over the ballots uh, and, and conceal them so that the poll watchers or so that the, uh, the observers um, can't see what, what they're doing. Now, the other thing about this Michigan hearing uh, is that because it was an actual state Senate hearing, um, there were Democrats that showed up. It's not just like a bunch of Republican state senators got together and said, hey, let's, let's meet at, uh, at the Wyndham and invite Rudy Giuliani to make his case. This was a real hearing uh, in which Rudy Giuliani was denied entry. They said, no, we don't want to hear from Rudy Giuliani, uh, which you know, I guess that might be, a, uh, um, uh, that might be an indication uh, of how they feel about the Trump campaign, that they're perhaps you know, somewhat hostile, although they were um, the the people there they seemed for the most part I, I I got the feeling that there were four Republicans on this committee and only two Democrats that's how it seemed that might not be the case but based on the questions uh, four people sounded pretty sympathetic to the witnesses um, two people were somewhat adversarial and uh, one of which was from Detroit but they didn't ask any tough questions of the witnesses they didn't um i mean there were a couple of witnesses i was thinking boy when the you know as soon as it goes to the questions the democrats are going to shred this guy uh, or this gal you know the, the dominion whistleblower in particular i thought oh my gosh uh, if i were a democrat the you know the, the questions i'd ask her and just tear her apart uh, they didn't even do that uh, the, the, i don't know if these democrats were just incompetent or if they because uh, i mean even if they thought that these people were telling the truth i mean you could at least try and um you could at least try and uh, hurt their credibility. I mean, at one point, the, Demo the Democratic woman uh, who was from Detroit uh, was asking this one witness, who I think was probably the best witness um, uh, of the day, and she was calling him by the wrong name. Now, I can't remember his name. Um, I think she was calling him Warnock or something. Or no, Raphael Warnock is the guy running for Senate in Georgia. But anyway, um, Warshaft, maybe that's what she was calling him. That wasn't his name. Um, she asked him, uh, cause he was alleging that there was, you know, voter fraud going on in Detroit. She said, well, if you look at 2016, Trump won, got 7,600 votes in Detroit. And this time he got 13,000 votes. So, 
uh, how, how is there any fraud? Trump got more votes this time. And the guy was like, was, was just puzzled. I mean, he asked like, well, wait, is, is there more to your question? I mean, what's the, I mean, because it was such a softball. <laughs> He's like, well, the fraud is in the 229 people I've confirmed uh, who voted who, who are dead and the 2,600 people who uh, voted and whose registered address um, is either, you know, is a vacant lot or a burned out building. I.e., you know, like this guy presented evidence of uh, almost just from that he's found so far. He hasn't gone through every absentee ballot. He said they've checked like 30,000 of the uh, 165,000 absentee ballots in, in Detroit. Um, and, you know, this is just, you know, one group uh, of people. Um, and they have discovered already uh, nearly 3,000 uh, illegal votes, votes that are quite literally fraudulent. And she's like, well, Trump got more votes this time. So how about that, Mr. Republican? I mean, if there was anyone who was at all on the fence watching this hearing, um, you know, the Democrats would have wanted to try and expose these witnesses and make them look bad and make them look like they're wrong. Uh, and in, in, in that case, um, which I think was the most serious challenge that any of these Democrats ever um, made to these witnesses because most of the witnesses they didn't ask any questions this was just really the republicans asking questions um you know she made him look better <laughs> in that case because she gave him the opportunity to present more you know more of his evidence and say you know like hey <laughs> I, who cares if trump got more votes i'm just i don't know who these people voted for all of these illegal votes could have voted for trump for for all we know <laughs> um all we know is that there were significant number of people who voted illegally. Uh, there were also ballots um, that had been, you know, because uh, these poll watchers and things were describing ballots that were, uh, they couldn't be, you know, read through the machine and had to go to be adjudicated. And they were ballots that um, <laughs> pretty much every one of those ballots, uh, they decided, oh, well, this person intended to vote for a Democrat. So like there was one ballot um, or a few ballots actually that they described uh, that had multiple um, bubbles filled in um, at each line that, you know, they, they uh, for the different candidates running for certain offices, like there was one ballot that filled in the Republican and the Democrat bubble on every elected office. And the canvassing board uh, decided, or not, well, not the canvassing board, I forget what they call it, but whatever the, the people were called, decided, oh, well, we're going to give this ballot to the Democrats. And it's like, well, no, you, if you fill in the ballot for two people, that, that's your vote is canceled out. You can't uh, you, you you can't just pick who you want that person to have voted for. Uh, they you know they invalidated their own ballot by filling in everything. They should have asked for a new ballot. And it's not like they bubbled in Trump's name, crossed out Trump, and then bubbled in Biden's name. <laughs> they bubbled in both on everybody. It was almost like this person had voted you know for something, and then uh, someone else got in and uh, bubbled in. Uh, the other party <laughs> to put it into question. So, yeah, there's, after watching all this, I mean, I'm absolutely certain this is not something that's just going to get swept under the rug. Um, this is not something that the RNC can just use to fundraise off of for a couple weeks. And then they say, oh, well, we tried. Oh, well, you know, we, we lost. Uh, we thought there was fraud, but, you know, we couldn't prove it. No, oh, well, better try again in four years. You know, hey, we better win these Georgia runoff races, everybody. Okay, time to move on. You know, no. <laughs> people are not going to move on from this. And nor should they. Um, you know, people should uh, continue uh, to investigate this and look into it, uh, you know, forever. I mean, it's just kind of like, it's, it's very creepy. It's kind of like after... Uh, um, you know, 9-11. It's like, okay, well, time to move on and go to Afghanistan. Uh, I hope time to move on and go to Iraq. And it's like, hey, can't we try and, you know, uh, investigate and find out exactly what happened on 9-11? You know, not um, scoop up all of the debris, uh, dump it onto a barge and ship it off to China to be melted down. Shouldn't we try and examine for forensic evidence? Uh, you know, at ground zero? It's like, no, what are you talking about? We're, we're invading Iraq now. <laughs> what are you still doing relitigating 9-11? And obviously, I've this is not 9-11, so I don't want anybody to take that out of context and say that I'm comparing uh, the election being stolen from Trump to 9-11. No, 3,000 people have not died. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm doing. But it's a similar, um, there's a similar creepy group thing that just says, yo, you have to accept the official narrative. Yeah, I mean, well, same thing happened with the virus. Even though the official narrative was in flux for quite some time, the official narrative was kind of solidified at this point. But I remember when the official narrative was changing week by week. 
So, yeah, at this point, um, there's no chance that the Democrats are going to try or that the courts are going to try and um, reconcile uh, the concerns of Trump voters and all these poll observers and all these various people uh, who think that the election is at the very least smells fishy. Um, they're not going to reconcile that with the with the Biden victory. It's very clearly now going to be a bifurcated perspective. There's going to be no um, uh, there, there's no attempt, you know, because if this went through the court and the court, you know, <clears throat> let the Trump people make their case or whatever, and they weren't just stonewalled at every stage, um, and uh, they presented their case and it turned out that you know their evidence wasn't sufficient, and you know the judge made a fair ruling. Uh, you know, you could win back a lot of the Trump people, and they could take that seriously if it, if, if it seemed like <laughs> that it that there is just uh, someone in the system uh, who was not totally out to get them. But that you know, that's just not the case. Um, so, with that said, if you gain anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.